My name is James Lawler and I'm the president of the Australian Medical Students Association. Uh, medicine has to be based on scientific evidence and medical students have to stick to science. Our politicians should also be guided by scientific evidence and the science is clear. Climate change is real, the earth is warming and it's due to human activity. It's clear that climate change is one of the main threats to health in Australia and globally in the 21st century. In years to come, we're going to see an increase in the frequency and severity of natural disasters. And that's important to Australians. We've got a history of bushfires, floods and storms, and the latter of those is going to affect our largely coast-based population. We can be sure that we will begin to see an increase in dengue fever and malaria, which are vector-borne diseases in our region, and uh, we'll even see them in the north of Australia. We rely largely on coal for our energy demands, despite the fact that it has a clear link to respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease, and even some cancers. Despite this, we've had bizarre comments from politicians in recent times about the health impacts of wind energy. Even though there are any serious review of scientific evidence shows that there are no negative health impacts due to wind energy sources. We should be hearing our politicians talk about the well-documented negative health impacts of coal, not the imaginary impacts of wind energy, and telling us how they will be addressing this. We've also been hearing a lot of talk from politicians lately about intergenerational theft, usually framed around the discussion on budget, debt and deficit. As a young person, when it comes to inter intergenerational theft, I want to hear politicians talk about climate change and how it needs to be addressed as a priority because it's my future which is going to be affected. Despite that, we've seen a government scrap its carbon pricing mechanism and we've had an argument with the opposition about how they can reduce, that's right, reduce, capital R-E-D-U-C-E, -E, the renewable energy target. You can't talk about a sustainable future for Australia without addressing climate change properly. Later this year, the Australian government will have the opportunity to be part of a legally binding universal agreement on climate change with other countries around the world at the COP21 climate change conference in Paris. I don't want my government to go there and espouse myths like I've heard before, like we need to fix our budget before we fix the climate, or that Australia is too small to make a difference. I want my government to show leadership in this conference and to work hard to convince other countries to follow their lead. The Australian government should commit to reducing emissions by 40% on year 2000 levels by 2025, and long term to reduce their emissions by 95% on 2000 levels by 2050. But this just isn't about what I want as a young person. This is in line with AMSA's policy on climate change and health, which was unanimously supported by medical students last year. It has a clear set of recommendations we'd like to see the government take up. This is about an organisation of young people who are our future health leaders and who consider climate change to be one of the most important things that the government can and should be acting on. And I look forward to seeing them do so.